Hi, today we're going to be learning about raising a power to a power. We're going to start off by looking at what it actually means when we have a power of a power. So when you've got a power of a power, you've got something like this, 2 to the power of 4 to the power of 5. Now in this expression over here, this whole thing is a power because it has an exponent and it has a base. But the base of that exponent, the, or the base of this power, is already a power itself. If you look at it, you can see it has its own base and exponent. Okay, so if I'm looking at the, the big expo or the big power over here, its base is a power, and here we can see its exponent or index. Okay, so that is what we're talking about when we have a power raised to a power, where you've got something in brackets which has its own exponent, so it's a power, and then it is being raised to a power as well, which means it has been given, and that whole thing is made a base of another power, okay, and has another exponent over there. Okay, so let's have a look at how we're actually going to simplify something like this. So in this question over here, or in this example, we're going to be taking the, that same power that I had, that I showed you already, so 2 to the power of 5 to the power of 4, and we are going to simplify this. Okay, so now let's just look back at what this actually means. Remember when you've got a base that is being raised to a power, what it means is that it is being multiplied by itself that many times. So I've got 2 to the power of 5 times 2 to the power of 5 times 2 to the power of 5 times 2 to the power of 5. That is what this means. The 4 over here is telling me that there are 4 of these being multiplied together. Okay, so I've got 4 2 to the power of 5s being multiplied together. Now we have already learned when we did multiplying base or powers with like bases, that when you have like bases that you're multiplying together, all you need to do is add the exponents. So what this is going to be when we simplify this is 2 to the power of 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 20. Okay, so now what we ended up doing over here is when we had a power being raised to a power, if we write it out in expanded form like this, or semi-expanded because I'm not expanding the 2 to the power of 5s, but I'm expanding so I have these bases being multiplied together, if I write it like that, I end up multiplying or adding the same exponent over and over again. I've got 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. Another way of referring to that is repeated addition. And another way of doing repeated addition is multiplication. Repeated addition is basically what multiplication is for. It's to make repeated addition shorter. So a quicker way of getting from here to there without having to write out this step over here is to say, well, I know that there are going to be four of these. Each of them is going to have the same exponent of five. And when I multiply them all together, I'm going to end up adding those exponents. So I'm going to have repeated addition. I'm going to repeat the addition of five plus five plus five plus five. I'm going to have four of them. So what I'm actually doing is I'm saying five times four. And that gives me 20. So now we can get to our rule. Our rule says that when you are multiplying or when you are raising a power to a power, this is our rule. Okay, so when you are raising a power to a power, what we need to do is we keep the base. Now that's the base of the inside power. Okay, we keep the base the same. You can see in this example over here that the 2 stayed 2. After I simplified it, it was still a 2. It hadn't changed. We keep the base the same and we multiply the exponents. So I take the exponent inside the brackets, which is the exponent of the, the inner power, and I multiply it by the exponent outside the brackets. So I times those two exponents together, and that is how I'm going to get the new exponent of my 
simplified version of it. Now another way to write this rule is to write it like this. a to the power of m in brackets to the power of n outside the brackets is equal to a, so the base stays the same, to the power of m times n. So I take those two exponents and I multiply them together. Okay, so now let's have a look at an example where we actually are going to use this rule. You are going to simplify and leave an exp in exponential form the expression 3 squared to the power of 7. Okay, so first of all, our rule says when we are raising a power to a power, and you can see over here I've got a power inside the brackets and it has an exponent outside the brackets, so I'm raising a power to a power. I keep the base the same, so the 3 is going to remain unchanged, and I multiply the exponent, so I have 2 times 7, and that gives me 14. So 3, to, 3 squared to the power of 7 is the same as 3 to the power of 14. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some that you're going to work on for yourself, and I'm going to give you one minute to work on these. Okay, you should hopefully be done with those, so let's go through each of those examples. So question A, you had 5 to the power of 3 in brackets to the power of 6. So our rule says that when we have a power being raised to a power, we keep the base the same, so the 5 is going to remain unchanged, and we're going to multiply the exponents. We have 3 multiplied by 6 is 18, so you should have got 5 to the power of 18 for that one. Then we've got 6 to the power of 8 in brackets to the power of 5, that gives us 6, the base stays the same, and we multiply the exponents, 8 times 5 is 40. And then the last one, 11 to the power of 4 in brackets to the power of 7, again the 11 is the base and it stays the same, and then 4 multiplied by 7 is 28. So you should have got for that one 11 to the power of 28. Okay, now let's have a look at another example where we have two different bases or two different powers inside our brackets. Okay, so in this example, I have got 3 to the power of 4 times 3 squared to the power of 5. Now in this case over here, I've got two powers inside the brackets, but they both have the same base, which means that I can combine them, I can simplify that. So that I'm going to first work out what's inside the brackets, and that gives me 3 to the power of 6. I have to keep that inside the brackets, I can't drop the brackets because I still have something outside the brackets that I have to do to it, and that is taking that power of 5 and applying that power of 5 to the 3 to the power of 6. So I can't drop the brackets yet, so now I'm going to, once I've simplified that, I now can go and drop the brackets by raising the power to the power and say, my base is going to stay the same, stays 3, and then I multiply my exponents and that gives me to the power of 30. So for that example, I get 3 to the power of 30. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to work on for yourself, and I'm going to give you for this two minutes to do it.
Okay, you should hopefully be done with that by now. So let's go through those three examples. So question A, we had 6 cubed to the power of 6 to the power of 4. Or 6 cubed times 6 to the power of 6 in brackets to the power of 4. And that, first we're going to simplify what's inside the brackets there. That gives us 6 to the power of 9 inside the brackets by adding the exponents because we're multiplying powers with the same base. And then we're going to raise it to the power of 4. And when we raise it to the power of 4, the base stays the same and we multiply the exponents, giving us to the power of 36. Okay, so that's what we should have got for question A. Then question B, we have 2 to the power of 5 to the, uh, times 2 to the power of 7 inside the brackets, which I'm going to simplify first. And that gives me 2 to the power of 12 inside the brackets. And then I raise that to the power of 3. And when I do that, the base stays the same stays 2, and I multiply my exponents. So 12 times 3 is 36. So for question B, you should have got 2 to the power of 36. And then the last one, question C, we have 7 to the power of 3 multiplied by 7 to the power of 4 inside the brackets. That I'm going to simplify, and that gives me 7 to the power of 7 inside the brackets squared. And now I'm going to raise the 7 to the power of 7 to the power of 2. I keep the base the same, and I multiply the exponents. And that gives me 7 to the power of 14. So that's what you should have got for question C. Now we're going to go on to an example where we have a fraction. Okay, so in this example, I have got 7 to the power of 15 divided by 7 to the power of 6. Okay, so first of all, that is in brackets. And that is being raised to the power of 3. Okay, so now we learned when we were doing dividing powers with the same base that we subtract the exponents. So I'm going to say 15 minus 6, and that gives me 7 to the power of 9. So inside the brackets, I'm going to have 7 to the power of 9. And then that is still being raised to the power of 3. And now I'm going to multiply those exponents together when I drop the brackets. The base stays the same, so I have 7 to the power of 9 times 3 is 27. So for that example, you should get 7 to the power of 27. So now I'm going to give you a few to work on for yourself. And I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this. Okay, let's go through those examples. So in question A, you had 3 to the power of 7 over 3 squared in brackets to the power of 4. So first we're going to simplify what's inside the brackets by doing this division over here. We subtract the exponents and keep the base the same. So that's going to be 3 to the power of 5 in brackets to the power of 4. And then I'm going to raise it to the power of 4 and that gives me 3. I keep the base the same and I multiply the exponents so that gives me to the power of 20. 
So for question A, you should have got 3 to the power of 20. Question B. We have 5 to the power of 6 over 5 cubed in brackets to the power of 8. That gives us, in brackets, 5 to the power of 3 by subtracting the exponents. And then that is all to the power of 8. And now we're going to simplify that and get that gives us 5 to the power of 24 by keeping the base the same and multiplying the exponents. And then the last one, question C, we had 11 to the power of 5 over 11 cubed in brackets to the power of 9. And when we take that, we're going to simplify first what's inside the brackets. That gets, that's going to give us 11 to the power of 2 inside the brackets. And then we raise that to the power of 9. We keep the base the same, so it's 11 to the power of 18. And that's what you should have got for question C. Okay, now we're going to go on to an example where we've got some other stuff happening as well. We've got something that's been multiplied outside the brackets as well. Okay, so in this example, we've got 2 to the power of 4 multiplied by, in brackets, 2 cubed times 2 to the power of uh, times 2 squared outside the brackets to the power of 6. Okay, so first I'm going to simplify what's inside my brackets. Now remember, bed mass says we must do what's inside the brackets first, then we do exponents, and then we do multiplication. Now this over here is going to be sorted out by multiplication later on. We're not going to do anything with it yet because it's not inside the brackets. So the 2 to the power of 4 is going to stay as it is for now, and I'm going to simplify what's inside the brackets. So 2, two cubed times 2 squared is 2 to the power of 5, and then to the power of 6. Okay, and now I'm going to simplify my exponent. Remember bed mass, bed uh, brackets, and then exponent. So now I'm going to simplify this over here before I do my multiplication. So I've got 2 to the power of 4, still stays the same, multiplied by, and now over here, once I sort this out, I don't need to have the brackets there anymore, but if I don't write the brackets, I have to show that there's multiplication in some way. So I can put a dot, or I can keep it in brackets if I want to as well. So that's going to be 2 to the power of 30. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply those together. Now remember, when you multiply things with the same base, you add the exponents. So it's going to be 2 to the power of 30 plus 4 is 34. Okay, so please be careful. Don't multiply those together. Don't get into this mode of multiplication and then forget when you need to start adding instead. Okay, so in that example, we get 2 to the power of 34. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few to do for yourself. And for these examples, I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this again. Okay, let's go through question A. 
So in question A, we have 3 to the power of 5, and then in brackets, 3 squared multiplied by 3 to the power of 4, and then outside the brackets, that is to the power of 7. Okay, so first of all, we're going to simplify what's inside the brackets. So the 3 to the power of 5 is going to stay as it is for now. And I've got 3 squared times 3 to the power of 4 gives me 3 to the power of 6. And that is being raised to the power of 7. The next thing we need to do is simplify this over here. We have 3 to the power of 6 to the power of 7 gives us 3 to the power of 5 multiplied by 3 to the power of 6 times 7 is 42. And then the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this by multiplying them together. Remember when we multiply things with the same base, we add the exponents. We have 3 to the power of 5 plus 42 is 47. So for question A, you should have got 3 to the power of 47. Okay, then question B, we have 5 to the power of 9 multiplied by, in brackets, 5 to the power of 4 times 5 to the power of 6, and then outside the brackets to the power of 6. Okay, so first, again, I'm going to simplify what's inside the brackets. So the 5 to the power of 9 isn't going to change. And I've got 5 to the power of 4 times 5 to the power, 5 to the power of 6 is 5 to the power of 10. Close the brackets, and that is the power of 6. Now I'm going to simplify that by raising the power to the power. I keep the base the same. And I multiply the exponents, so it's going to be 5 to the power of 60. And that gives me, when I multiply those together, 5 to the power of 69, because when we multiply or powers with the same base, we add the exponents. So for question B, you should have got 5 to the power of 69. And then the last one, question C, we've got 17 to the power of 8, and then in brackets, 17 to the power of 6 over 17 to the power of 3, close brackets to the power of 8. So first, I'm going to sort out those brackets. 17 to the power of 6 divided by 17 to the power of 3. I am dividing powers of the same base, so I'm going to subtract my exponents, and that gives me 17 to the power of 3, and that is to the power of 8. And then I'm going to simplify that, and that gives me 17 to the power of 8 multiplied by 17 to the power of 3 times 8 is 24. And then when I multiply those together, I add the exponents, and that gives me 17 to the power of 32. So for question C, you should have got 17 to the power of 32. Okay, now the last thing we're going to be looking at is when you're working with negatives. Okay, so now we've already learned about working with negatives when we were doing multiplication and division of powers with like bases. And the rules that we learned there are going to apply very similarly to what we're doing now. Okay, so let's have a look at an example where we've got negative and then negative 2 cubed to the power of 4, so this is the example that we're doing now. We're going to compare this one to this one over here. Negative and then negative 2 to the power of 4 cubed. Okay, so we're going to compare what happens with these two. Now they look very similar but there is a significant difference in that the exponents are the other way around. Now if there was no negatives here it wouldn't make any difference because when we multiply two numbers together, remember multiplication is commutative, so I can switch them around and I'll still get the same answer. So 3 times 4 is going to be the same as 4 times 3, but because of the negative, I'm going to have a difference, and that is because over here I've got a negative that is being raised to the power of 4, and over here I've got a negative that is being raised to the power of 3, and they are going to behave differently, because remember when we learned already that when you have a negative with an even exponent, then it means you have an even number of negatives that are being multiplied together, and that gives you a positive. And over here, when you have a negative with an odd exponent, is a an odd number of negatives that are being multiplied together, and that gives you an, a negative answer. Okay, so over here, first of all, remember we learned, Bedmas says that anything that happens inside the brackets should go first, and then exponents. This over here is multiplication that's being this is being multiplied by that. It's negative 1 being multiplied by that. So I'm not going to do anything with this negative yet. I'm going to keep it as it is over there for now. But when I simplify this over here, I've got a negative to the power of 4. It's an even exponent that is going to become positive. So it's going to be positive 2 to the power of 3 times 4 is 12. But in this one over here, the negative also stays the same. But in this case, I've got negative 2 to the power of 4 cubed, now I've got a negative to the power of 3, that's an odd exponent, so it's going to be negative 2, but then 4 times 3 is also 12. 
So both of these give me 2 to the power of 12 and 2 to the power of 12, but here this one is positive because it was a negative being raised to a positive or to an even exponent, making it positive. And here I had a negative being raised to an odd exponent, making it stay negative. Please note that this negative is not being affected by that odd exponent, and this negative is not being affected by that even exponent. Because remember, we said that our base, for this exponent, the base would just be the 2. It's on, The base only is negative if it's in brackets. And over here, that base is not in brackets. The whole power is in, in brackets, which means that the whole power is the base of the 4, including that negative over here. But this one over here, also, that base is not in brackets. And here, the uh, base... The whole power is in brackets, including that negative, and that means that the, the 3 is being applied to that minus, but here this 3 is not being applied to the minus, and here this 4 is being applied to the minus, but this 4 is not being applied to the minus. Please be aware of the difference between those two, and how they affected what we did over here. Okay, so now in this one, I've got a negative multiplied by a positive, giving me a negative 2 to the power of 12, but in this one, I've got a negative multiplied by a negative giving me a positive 2 to the power of 12. So be aware of how they are different when you've got a negative inside the brackets with an even exponent outside the brackets but it's not affected by an exponent inside the brackets. And here I've got a negative inside the inside the brackets with an odd exponent outside the brackets but it's not affected by the exponent inside the brackets. Okay so now I'm going to give you a few to work on yourself and I'm going to give you three minutes to work on these examples.
Okay, so let's go through those examples. So in question A, we had negative and then negative 7 in, to the power of 5 in brackets to the power of 6. So first, this negative is going to stay as it is. And then the negative 7 to the power of 5 to the power of 6, that power of 6 is even, which means that this negative over here is going to change to positive. And I keep the base the same, 7 to the power of 5 times 6 is 30. And then that just gives me negative 7 to the power of 30. Okay, so that's what we should have got for question A. Then question B, we've got negative as well. And then again, I've got negative 7. But in this case, it's to the power of 6 inside the brackets and to the power of 5 outside the brackets. So here, that power of 5 is odd. And that's being applied to the exponent, or to the negative, which makes it stay negative. And then I've got six, 7 to the power of 6 times 5 is 30. So it's still 7 to the power of 30, but this one is negative because their power outside the brackets or the exponent outside the brackets was even odd. The exponent outside the brackets was odd, which made this stay negative. Okay, now I've got a negative multiplied by a negative. That gives me a positive 7 to the power of 30. So that's what you should have got for question B. Then question C, we have got negative 13 to the power of 5 multiplied by, in brackets, negative 13 to the power of 4 times negative 13 to the power of 3 in brackets to the power of 8. Okay, so now I'm going to first keep this the same. I can't do anything to that yet. I'm going to simplify what's inside the brackets first. So I've got negative 13 to the power of 4 times 13 to the power of 3. That is negative 13 to the power of 7. And that is still to the power of 8 over there. Now, my exponent outside the brackets is even, which means that this is going to change to positive. So I've got negative 13 to the power of 5 times positive 13 to the power of, and then 7 times 8 is 56. And now I can multiply these together and add the exponents. A negative times a positive is negative. 13 to the power of 5 plus 56 is 61. So for question C, you should have got negative 13 to the power of 61. And then the last one, question D, we have negative 7 in, uh, in brackets, negative 7 to the power of 6 times 7 to the power of 4, close the brackets, cubed. And then in new brackets, negative 7 to the power of 5 times 7 to the power of 3, close the brackets to the power of 6. Okay, so first let's work on this first set of brackets. Inside here, I'm going to simplify that, and I've got negative 7 to the power of 6 times 7 to the power of 4 is negative 7 to the power of 10. Close the brackets, and that is cubed. And then I'm going to do the other brackets over here, and I've got negative 7 to the power of 5 times 7 to the power of 3 is also negative 7 to the power of 5, to 5 plus 3 is 8. And that's the power of 6. Okay, so now I can go and sort out my exponents. When I do that, I'm going to look and see this is an odd exponent, so it makes that negative stay negative. So it's going to be negative 7 to the power of, and then 3 times, or 10 times 3 is 30. So I have negative 7 to the power of 30. Then this one over here, I've got a negative as well, but the exponent outside the brackets is even. That means that this is going to change to positive 7 and then to the power of 8 times 6 is 48. Now I can multiply those together. I've got a negative times, negative times a positive is negative. 7 to the power of 30 plus 48 is 78. So for question D, you should have got negative 7 to the power of 78. And that is how we work with raising a power to a power with exponents. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also, be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.